Hello guys, this is Adeep and welcome back to Motorhub. Today's video is about the all new Tata Safari. Lots of changes in terms of aesthetics and stands of the vehicle compared to the old Safari. This here is the XZA plus 6 seater automatic variant and it retails at a price of around Rs 26 lakhs on road Andhra Pradesh. The safety features of this variant includes 6 airbags, ABS with EBD and electronic stability control, traction control system, tire pressure monitoring system, hill descent control, centrally mounted fuel tank, isofix style seat mounts, rollover mitigation, corner stability control, brake disc wiping, high speed alert, speed sensing auto door lock and impact sensing auto door lock. This is the key of the vehicle. Up front it gets a tri aero front grille which was previously seen on the Nexon and is the only thing which differentiates it from the Harrier. These are LED DRLs which doubles up as turn indicator. Xenon HID projector for low beam and halogen for high beam. There is also a lion imprinted inside the headlight unit for reasons best known to Tata. And this is the fog lamp with cornering function. Straight ahead, let's open the bonnet of the vehicle. No hydraulic struts on offer at this price point. And this is the Fiat Source 2 litre turbocharged BS6 diesel engine branded Cryotech 170 by Tata. It produces a peak power of 170 bhp and a torque of 350 Nm. It is combined to either a 6 speed manual or a 6 speed automatic gearbox sourced from Hyundai. Proper insulation offered to reduce noise. Coming to the side, it gets machine cut alloy wheels finished in dual tone. And the tire size happens to be 235x60R18. The Tata Safari is built on Omega Arc, derived from Land Rover's D8 platform. Mirror finished in gloss black along with a turn indicator. Chrome door handles with request sensor. The shape from the rear still feels boxy. Tata's logo. And this is the reverse parking camera. Reflector with rear reverse parking sensors. LED tail lights, rear wiper with rear defogger as well. Tailgate is quite heavy and there is not much space in the boot as there is a third row on offer. However, they can be reclined to increase the boot carrying capacity. The spare tire is placed underneath the body of the vehicle. Moving to the rear door, the door opens quite wide and is finished in two-tone. The build quality also feels solid. There is also a puddle lamp placed on all the four doors. Door handles are finished in silver. Lots of storage space in door pockets. This being a six-seater, it gets two captain seats in the middle row which can be adjusted for recline and position as well. Third row also gets adjustable headdress and AC vents, cabin light, AC control with bottle holder. Another bottle holder, twin USB charging ports and some storage space below it. Middle row AC vents are placed on the B pillar. This is the panoramic sunroof which I will show you in a bit. Some storage space here for the rear passengers and twin USB charging ports. 
which are placed quite low. Good leg room and knee room. Anathai support is also great. And head room is adequate. This is the shark fin antenna and silver roof rails. Moving to the driver's seat. It gets a request sensor on the driver's door. These are the power window controls. Electric controls for the driver's seat. Accelerator and brake pedals. And this is the start stop button. These are the steering mounted audio controls. And these are for cruise controls and multi information display. You get headlight controls on the right and wiper controls on the left. This is the drive mode selector. This is the traction control button. And this is for the hill descent control. It gets a single zone automatic climate control. The AC info is shown in the infotainment system. These are for the front and rear fog lights. This is the eco mode. And this is the sport mode button. These are the audio system controls. It also gets electronic parking brake with auto hold function. Three cup holders, armrest with 12 volt power outlet, and two USB charging ports. It also gets cooling function. These are USB and AUX ports with some storage space below it. Nice finishing on the dashboard. The glove box is of decent size along with a light placed on top. Auto dimming inside rear view mirror. Cabin lights. There are three switches for the sunroof. This is to open the sunroof curtain which opens all the way back. This is to tilt the sunroof and beside it is the one to open it. Passenger side visor gets mirror with two lights. No mirror or ticket holder on the driver side visor. And these are the outside mirror controls. This is the 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen infotainment system. It gets a total of 9 speakers, 4 door speakers, 4 tweeters and 1 subwoofer all powered by an external amplifier. The AC controls are also shown in this. The audio quality is very good and the acoustics are tuned by JBL. Apart from these it also gets settings for lighting, park assist etc. You can also customize the touchscreen infotainment system by changing the themes. This is the reverse parking camera and it gets three modes. It also gets guidelines and are adaptive. It also gets voice commands for media and navigation. Please say the command after the beep.
data also shows statistics for different trips in terms of fuel efficiency, driving style and safety. This is like a control center and you can increase or decrease the brightness of the screen and cast media in photo instrument cluster. Turning on the ignition, it does a full swipe of the analog speedometer followed by the digital tachometer. It is a 7 inch display which shows fuel, engine temperature, air blue level, odor meter, tachometer, gear position drive mode, time and outside temperature. It also shows the exact door open in form of graphics and warnings. It also shows distance to empty, tire pressure monitoring system, real time power and torque consumption, twin trip meters and their statistics and instantaneous fuel consumption. Changing drive modes also shows graphics in the instrument cluster. This is for the wet mode. This is for the rough mode. And this is for the hill descent control. Now let's get driving. The car feels very refined and the drivability is good. The upshifts are also smooth from the 6-speed torque converter. The 350 Nm of torque comes in as low as 1750 rpm, so there's good amount of punch on offer. The city driving is good as the gearbox keeps the revs low and likes to be in higher revs. It redlines at around 4000 to 4500 rpm, so the red line comes in quickly. Shifting into sport mode alters the engine performance and the steering weighs up brilliantly well as the car picks up pace. High speed stability is also good. That is because of the Omega Arc platform which is derived from the Land Rover D8. So Omega Arc basically stands for Optimal Modular Efficient Global Advanced Architecture. It also gets automatic headlights and wipers. Coming to fuel efficiency, this being an automatic, it delivers around 13 to 14 km per litre in city and around 18 to 19 km per litre on highways, which is quite good for a car of this size. This is the 6 seater version, and you can also opt for a 7 seater, and it is loaded with a lot of features. And the ride quality is just amazing. The 2 litre Cryotech engine is also a gem. It pulls hard in the mid-range, it feels indestructible and strong and can go on any surface without a hiccup whatsoever. The car maintains its land beautifully well even while cornering and the handling is just confidence inspiring. So guys this is my vlog on the all new Tata Safari 2021 and do comment what you think about this beast. See you guys in another video, bye bye.